Greetings, dear friends. We're together again. I hope you have a Bible open and that you'll look into the Word with me. This week I have been talking to you out of the third chapter of Ephesians. Ephesians, a blessed book. There's so much said by the Apostle Paul here that makes a great difference in our living and in our life. If we don't pay attention to Paul, we're not going to have the kind of life we could have. He is the only man who tells us how to live in this dispensation of grace. Grace. That wonderful, wonderful word, grace. I've been talking to you a little bit about this word and about what I wanted to say to you about it. And I'm still in this uh, third verse that says, uh, how that by revelation, how that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. I'll get to mystery in a moment. But first, I want you to understand this word revelation. God gave to the Apostle Paul the gospel that fits those who are saved by the cross. You understand that? When Abraham's day came, he was given a gospel that fit that day. When David came, he was given a gospel written magnificently in his psalms that fit that day. When Jesus of Nazareth came, he was given a gospel, Moses' gospel, but he gave new light to it by adding mercy and grace to his gospel. But when Jesus died on the cross, listen to me, there was only one to whom God gave a gospel that fit the things that had taken place at the cross. As I said in yesterday's broadcast, the Apostle Paul mentions the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus several times in different ways, but he mentions the cross over 30 times in his writings because that's the gospel he's given based on the death of Jesus Christ based on the cross. And if we don't see that and get that, we're not getting the right gospel. The gospel for this dispensation of grace is the gospel that comes through the revelation the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the Apostle Paul. And that's the verse we've been on. How that by revelation he made known unto me. Paul wasn't dumb. He's not an ignoramus, as I say. The Apostle Paul knew that he was given a gospel that nobody else preached. Peter wasn't preaching it. None of the other apostles were preaching it. Apollos, the great preacher of that day, wasn't preaching it. Because it wasn't given to them. It was given to Paul to give to us a revelation. Now I go a step further. The Apostle Paul also taught in his revelation that this thing must be revealed to you. That you're not going to get it by just study. You're not going to get it by knowing Greek and Hebrew. You're not going to get... Look at all the people who know those things who have kept hidden like a veil is covered over their face and, and their minds. Look at all those people who do not preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the source of salvation. Who do not preach grace, which is what makes it all work. They don't preach it. They don't teach it. They don't understand it. They don't want to because it's written in the book. It's written in the book. I'm not so smart that I see it differently than everybody. It's written plain, black and white letters. It's written in the Bible. It's there in Paul's message that came to him by revelation. And so he sits down and he writes 14 different letters that carry out different aspects of this message because he got it from Jesus. By revelation. It was revealed to him. 
You know what we need today? We need a revival of revelation. We need people to come to their Bible and see who and what they are in this dispensation of grace. They need to see that. What belongs to us today? Not what Abraham gave us. Not what David gives us. Not what Isaiah gives us. But what does God give the believer today who is born again? Who has Christ living in him? Is he getting a gospel that fits that? I preached for many years and didn't know that. I thought I was preaching the gospel. I thought I was telling people the truth. I wasn't because I didn't know it. I didn't know what grace was. I didn't know the true gospel by revelation. Paul says back in the first chapter of Ephesians, verse 17, he says, I'm praying for you that you'll have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Listen to me. Is that being preached to you? Are you having somebody preach to you that is telling you that the knowledge they have came to them by revelation? How do you get revelation? Is it something new and different and fresh? Is it something that can be mixed up with Islamic teaching and the Koran and, and all such junk? that's in our world today, can it just be mixed up with any denominational idea? No, sir. It goes to this Word. A revelation takes you to the Word of God. It takes you to what God has said in His Word. That's why Paul is so important. He said, The gospel is given to me to give to you. So he wrote it out in 14 short letters, and he expects you to study it and to get it. But you're going to have to have much of what he says reveal to you. What is God going to reveal to you? Listen to me now. What is God going to reveal to you? He's going to reveal to you what is written in His Word. You say, well, why do we need that? We've always had it. Yes, but it wasn't preached. It isn't known. The average preacher does not preach grace. He preaches grace mixed with law. He preaches a commingle gospel. He preaches truths that are not even for us today or intended to be for us today because he's mixed up. He's all mixed up. He's got it all mixed up. He's got his mind working aside from the Holy Spirit. And so the people don't get the gospel. They don't get it. Oh, they get the words. They get the cliché terms. They get... Various ideas presented to them, but they don't get the gospel. The gospel is the depth of God's love. The gospel is what God is doing Himself, not what we're doing. So Paul said, I'm praying for you that you'll have a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. Oh, I, I'm raising my voice today because this this is so important and this is so important. People sit in a church building for 50 years and never hear the gospel. They never hear the gospel. They never know what God is doing today in His plan. What is He doing? He's saving people by that shed blood. He's saving people by Christ's death on the cross where they died also. They died in Him. They were in Him when He died and they died with Him. They don't know all of that. It's written in the book. It's written in Paul's message because his is the final gospel. There'll not be another gospel given to humanity during the tribulation period and during the millennium. They'll go back to the law. That's okay. But you're not a part of that today. And you won't be a part of that today if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will have this revelation that God gave to Paul and what he presented in the Scripture. So here's the way it'll work. God gave it to Paul and nobody else. Paul sat down and wrote letters of what was given to him in the revelation. The revelation of the time in which we lived in this dispensation of grace. That's what it's about. It is a revelation of the times of the dispensation of grace. He gave it to him. It's put in the Bible. Thankfully, not a whole lot of it has changed, but some of it has. Some of it has changed because men didn't like the way it was said. They didn't want to do what was said. 
So they change it. And the new Bibles are greatly changed. But that's the way God gets his message through to us. You say, well, you're planting doubts in people. I hope I can. Oh, I hope I can put a doubt in your mind. If you're not reading Paul's epistles, and the only Bible I use is the King James Bible, the old King James, not the new King James. It doesn't fit either. But what fits the day we're living in by the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, our source of salvation, is mostly found in the old King James Bible. You can find it in other Bibles too. Not just the King James, because I'm not a Bible salesman. But I'm telling you the truth. That when man messes around with the Scriptures, it radically changes what God is saying to us for the day that we live in. And the day that we live in is written in Paul's epistles. That'll change at the rapture. When the rapture takes place, that'll be the end of that gospel. In the meantime, you and I have a certain dedication to what Paul says by his revelation. He received a revelation of first things that belong to grace. Second, you need a revelation of those things that Paul received and wrote in his book wrote in his epistles. That's where Paul stands out, in his epistles. You need a revelation of those things because you can sit in a church house today and preachers even preach, let's say, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. And that preacher will never say, that you were literally in Christ's body, and when he died, your old life died too. That's the things you're doing today. That's your old life. Your old life is what you do aside from Jesus Christ, what you do aside from Sunday morning meetings. Your life that died is that part of you that is dead at the cross. So if it's not preached, you don't understand that. You'll wrestle with it. You'll wrestle with your old life. All the days of your life, you'll wrestle and fight and argue over your old way of doing things. i got to stop. You see, there's a lot to be said here. And I'll try not to get in too big a hurry. I'm just to the third verse and we're not finished with it. And we'll get back to it in our next session together. May God bless His Word. May the Word grow abundantly in your life. Take what God revealed to Paul. Read about it. Study it until it's revealed to you because you're not going to get it anywhere else but by a revelation of Jesus Christ in you. Well, enough said. Be back with you next program. God love you. Bye-bye.